Hello guys, Novel here and in this video I like to talk about my workflow and experience in making my 3D characters. So first of all, creating 3D characters is one of my favorite parts in 3D world. Well, it's just because I like characters from movies, games, and I was just thinking of creating my own original character. So of course, the first thing you want to have before modeling your character in 3D is a concept art, absolutely important. Concept art gives you so much information about how your 3D will look like in the final result. So basically, uh, your final 3D will depend on your concept art, I'd say. So because of that, you want to spend your time creating your character proportion, clothes, hair, and any other accessories as your concept art. And in my case, I'll draw my concept art using software called Krita and Clip Studio Paint. And maybe this first step can be very tough to do, but here's the thing. You can always look for references online to enrich your concept art. I'd say using references is not a cheating as long as you don't, you know, blatantly copy other people's works. I mean like, it's just like you, you know, covering a song, but of course you need to add your personal touch on it. I myself have been using references a lot, I mean like, I, I, I always looking for references in my training process. And if you ask me where, well, it's pretty much everywhere. It can be from games, movies, or maybe from social media like, you know, from Pinterest, Pixiv, or some people on Twitter, and even Google Images, of course. Now what you want to draw in your concept art is not the stylized process illustration. Instead, you want to draw your character from the front view, back view, side view, and the third quarter view if it necessary. But for me, having only from the front view of the character concept art is pretty much sufficient. Okay, now the next step in the workflow is the modeling process itself. Now, I bet you guys already know that there are at least two types of modeling techniques. And the first one is the traditional geometry or topology modeling, and the other one is the sculpting technique. For myself, I have been experiences in using both techniques and both are just useful. But in my case, because, you know, I model for game engines, my model should be a low-poly model. So in my opinion, geometry or topology modeling is just the perfect uh, technique for this case. Because you won't be portrayed to do retopology for your model, which means you don't work twice. Maybe there is an add-in for automatic retopology for Blender, but I'm not quite sure that it it will perfectly work as you would expect. But if you use ZBrush, I think it's not the case. ZBrush automatic retopology is very neat, and I am myself very impressed with uh, its feature. But hey, we talk about Blender here, so yeah, geometry or topology modeling is the winner in my opinion in this case. Also, if you have a neat concept art for your model, you will be able to model without having a problem. This is why uh, concept art is very important because it gives you so much information about what you should model and what you should not, how much poly do you need, and etc. And with that information alongside you, believe me, you will also use Ctrl Z lesser compared to without using any concept art. So while modeling, I usually UV unwrap my model, but it's just a simple UV unwrap, not very complicated. I just use this UV to give a glimpse texture on the model by using my concept art as the texture, of course. And this is one of the benefits of using concept art. By using this technique, I can tell if my model is correctly shaped or not. Now talk about modifiers. I only use mo my ray modifiers and that's it. <laughs> well, sometimes I also use solidify modifiers to emphasize the shape of the model, especially when I working on the character clothes. But I will remove this modifier when the model is finished and uh, it's just because, you know, using solidify modifier will add up a new poly count. Some of you guys ask me how to model hair. 
well it's pretty much basic uh, i believe if you watch my other videos the way i model hair is just to follow up the concept art and it's pretty much about moving vertices around to match the concept art and i don't really think much about how actually well uh, there is another way though, you can use uh, you know, a bezier curve and you know, add a simple geometry or bevel on it and move the bezier curve the way that you want. But in my opinion, using a bezier curve and bevel can be very, uh, very messy sometimes because you need to apply the geometry and then tidy up the geometry later. Okay, now moving up to the next step which is the rigging process. Well, I watch several 3D modelers out there and some of them put this step after the texturing process, but it's different for my case. I put this process before the texturing and maybe you are wondering why. Well, it's because in the middle of the rigging process, you might want to change the poly of your model a bit uh, like you know, adding new edges, fixing up vertices in order to deform your mesh correctly. So this is why texturing should come after the rigging, because if you change your mesh after you texture it, of course it's, it is most likely possible that your UV map will mess up. So in conclusion, if you are not confident with your mesh topology, then do the rigging first and then texture it later. Well, the way to rig in Blender and I believe in most of 3D softwares, I think there are at least two techniques. The first one is to assign width to vertex manually, or using the second one, which is to assign width by using width painting, which is, <laughs> you know, both of them are manual actually. In Blender, there is a way to assign wig automatically actually, which is when you assign your model to an armature by pressing Ctrl P and then choose automatic wig, but of course it won't give you the correct wig influence. So in my case though, I used to assign wig to vertex manually and then fix it in the wig painting later on if it necessary, and either way should work but you know, you need to know how you should assign wig to your mesh. The rule of thumb in my opinion is to give a gap between joints as you can see here. This is a post I found on Twitter and I mean this is super legit guys, I mean like this is the perfect way I can find out there to rig a low poly model. So for the facial expressions, in Blender you can create shape keys to deform your mesh. Based on my experience, shape keys can be exported to most game engines, including Unity 3D. So for facial expressions, I recommend you using shape keys instead of assigning vertex weight manu manually to bones. And then, you know, the way how you control the shape keys value is by adding driver so you can control your shape keys by moving up your rig. Okay, now the next step is the texturing process. And of course, as you know, you need to UV unwrap your model first. I usually use a checker texture to help me to know better whether my UV is correct or not. For texturing, I usually use different layers to avoid mistakes and you know, it can be used for backups purposes too. Unfortunately, Blender doesn't have a layer organizer like in Photoshop, so you should create on your own. And the way how you do this is to create an appropriate material so it can manipulate such features. So to set up this material, you will need your shader, a mixed RGB shader, and your texture of course. So as you can see here, we use the alpha of the second texture as the mixed RGB factor. This way the first texture will be rendered on the second texture alpha. And there you go, you just manipulate the layer feature that Blender missed. Well, there are add-ons to do the same exact thing, but uh, I found it quite complicated and not very practical for me, so I use the traditional notes instead. But I do really hope that Blender will add layers feature in the future too. Simple tips, before you start to draw fine details on your hand drawn texture, first of all fill up your texture with gradient colors. In my opinion, it gives a slight shade so if you are going to export your model and consider applying an unlit shader, your model will just look fine even without any shade. So this kind of technique is just what I found on game models out there, especially in mobile games. 
If you look closely when you play games, you will notice that some of them do not cast any shadow. This is one of the methods to improve game performance so it can run on stable FPS even on low spec devices. So I usually just use the trial brush in Blender and I will say the uh, the brush is just okay. I mean like Blender brush doesn't really represent the real world brush in my opinion because when you start making strokes, the colors do not blend and maybe I am the one that doesn't know that a blending brush exists in Blender but I can't find this feature anywhere in Blender so if you guys know about this stuff let me know in the comment. Oh yeah, when you draw on texture and you don't want to affect the alpha channel of your texture, uncheck the effect alpha properties. This way whenever you draw your strokes will clip only to your texture alpha, which is very very handy if you are working on many layers. And yeah, I believe that's pretty much it about my workflow and I hope you guys find this video helpful and be sure to subscribe for more content like this and with that being said, I will see you next time. Bye!